trick, pushing a couple times to do the next trick. I counted that as just 13 hours and 20 minutes of walking um, because it seems about fair. Pushing is a lot harder than taking a step, but you get to roll between, so it kind of rounds out, I think. Uh, 13 hours and 20 minutes of walking was about 3,500 calories. Um, but that doesn't count the actual tricks, you know, like the hard part. So I was trying to figure all that out. That's really hard to do. The closest I could come up with is if you, I saw a listing that said if you do 100 jumping jacks, you could burn up to 200 calories. That would be two calories per jump, but jumping jacks are easy compared to, you know, winding up and jumping as high as you can. Um, so I counted those as about three calories per jump. There's 4,000 jumps. <laughs> so 12,000 calories plus 3,500 calories. You got 15,500 calories that you would burn in this marathon game of skate. Um, which is about the same as running five back-to-back uh, -back, uh, marathons at once. <laughs> Probably not possible. I've heard of people doing two in a day, but five back-to-back -back marathons without ever taking a break. You know, call me crazy, but I, I'm not sure that's possible. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it would take to do every possible trick in a row. Um, which is, uh, pretty interesting, but, uh, yeah, so 15,500 calories is like burning four and a half pounds. Um, <laughs> so you would, you would leave a lot lighter than you started. And, uh, yeah, so this of course will never happen like any of the physics problems I do. This one was more just random math and not physics, but I did think that was a pretty interesting question. And that's what I came up with for the answer. Uh, if you could come up with, with any other multipliers for things that I didn't think of, put those down below uh, in the comments. And uh, if you have any weird questions, go to radratvideo.com. You can submit it in the Ask Radrat form. I'll either use it there or I might make it into a, a video, uh, whatever, I'll get it either way. But uh, that's it for now. In the sidebar, you'll see videos that YouTube thinks you might like. And you can tap the logo in the center of the screen to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This time on the glorious return of the Retro Rippers series, we're talking about Gino Ainucci. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding. I talk about all kinds of different things in the skateboarding world. I answer your questions on my main series, Ask Rad Rat. I do all kinds of other stuff. I used to do a lot of skater profiles in this series called Retro Rippers, and I'm finally getting back into it. Today we're talking about Gino Ainucci, who is probably the most requested person to be on this series. Um, before that was Tom Penny, and I did that that video. That was one of the biggest videos I've ever done on this channel. And people have been dying to see Gino. People are huge fans of this guy. Um, there's even a Instagram account that's just tricks that Gino did. And the, the owner of that account actually contacted me too and asked me to do this video. So a lot of people have been dying for this one and I didn't really get why. So when I first started skating, uh, 2001, took me a while, a couple years into it, I'm watching lots and lots of videos and uh, Yeah Right came out, Gino had a part in that and his stuff was just kind of okay to me. And it, that his, his part always seemed kind of like a skipper to me. And I just didn't get why so many people were in love with this guy's skating. And so I didn't really feel like doing it for a long time and as I, decided to do a little bit of research, read some articles, read some interviews, learn more about the guy, I started to get a much bigger appreciation for his skating. And uh, I think my mind has changed quite a bit on Gino throughout the process of making this video and doing all the research for it. Same thing with Tom Penny, actually. I thought he was good, but I didn't really care. And now he's one of my favorite all-time skaters. So let's talk about Gino. He grew up in Long Island, uh, and he started skateboarding around 1987. He skated around Long Island and in Brooklyn. Um, and when he was about 16 or 17, he started trying to get sponsors. He sent out Sponsor Me tapes. And one of the guys he sent it to was John Lucero over at Black Label. And he liked what he saw of Gino skating. And he said, hey, I'll send you some boards and some shirts. You send me more footage of you skating those boards and wearing these shirts, and I'll keep sending you more stuff. And so that's what happened. 
and Gino was uh, skating for Black Label. He got some more sponsors at the time. I think uh, Goldwing Trucks was one uh, with his sponsor tapes. And so that's, that's what he was doing. And the first video that he was in was in 1991's Crummy promo from uh, Black Label. And this was just kind of a low budget basic video that, that they put out. And uh, you see Gino in there and he's skating a lot of his hometown spots. There's this little bump to gap um, that was close by where he used to skate uh, all the time with his friends. And one thing you'll notice that he's doing tons and tons of 360s, like everywhere. Every trick is a 360 almost, or some variation on a 360 is a 360 and accidentally lands in a, a spin, <laughs> which is kind of cool. But yeah, he's doing tons and tons of, of 360s. And one thing I thought about when I watched this, this is in 1991, he had been skating for like four years. I've been skating 18 years and I still can't do 360s. I mean, I've done where you spin like 180 and land in a pivot, but just to do a full 360, I don't think I've ever actually done one, at least rolling forward, I've done them fakie anyway, but um, yeah, so that's actually pretty impressive, uh, all things considered, especially given those boards at the time. But um, so yeah, he was skating for Black Label and he actually moved up to California and he stayed with John for a while and uh, he was starting to get some attention with some of the stuff he was doing. So he had an ad with Black Label with his, for a switch kick flip down the hubba set. And he also did a switch backside flip, but this was kind of a funny story. So um, John Lucero, he sent out the, the pictures, I think he was gonna go to, uh, to Big Brother um, for them to publish, and he only put the label as backside flip. And he said that the whole team was bummed and they came up to him like, why didn't you say that was switch? And uh, he says, what switch? <laughs> so that tells you a lot about how ahead of things uh, Gino was. Switch was still pretty new. And even from the very beginning, he was doing tons of switch stuff, which is pretty cool. And something else he did around this time was he did a backside heel flip over the Gons Gap. And this trick was a big deal. So this spot was very famous. He had just done, done something new on it. And even though he didn't land great, he's not sure if he should even count it because he stepped off. He would have had to step off anyway because of the ledge, but he would have stepped off even if there wasn't a ledge because the land wasn't great. But still, the sequence got published. It got a, a lot of attention. He was starting to get more uh, sponsorship offers and things like that. And he eventually decided to move over to uh, World Industries where Nadis Kalpis was running the brand 101. And he appeared in their video snuff. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of early switch stuff here. But I was also surprised how tech it was too. But he's got gaps, he's got a nice fakey hard flip, but just look at this tech stuff. Nolly inward heel flip to nose slide. He's got a switch tray flip mani. He's got a switch flip nose mani fakey flip out. And this stuff is pretty heavy tech, even for that time. Keep in mind, in the early 90s, everyone was doing crazy manual stuff, crazy flip and flip out grinds and everything. But even for that time, he was hanging with all those guys. And um, it's really impressive to me because he's not known for that type of skating. Like I said, his, his parts when he got a little bit of a name going, when he became bigger, those parts are more simple. Lots of basic tricks, switch, pop, shove it, you know, like simple stuff like that. But he could do the tech. He was doing those, the other tricks that he later uh, settled into more was because he wanted to. He had the chops to do that crazy tech stuff, but he just did what he wanted to later. And so when he originally switched over to 101, he thought he was just a replacement because a lot of the team switched over to start uh, Chocolate and Girl. Um, and so he felt like they brought him in maybe just because they needed bodies to fill out their team, but he clearly had lots of skill. Um, and so after snuff, he was in the next video, uh, 20 shot sequence. And you can see some of his staple tricks in here. He's got switch flips, switch pop shove it. But again, I've got to point out the tech stuff. He's got a backside flip, fakey Manny, half cap flip out. That's crazy. That's some Rodney Mullen and Daywon Song type stuff at that time. And he, he talked about skating here being really stressful, but he was obviously making it work. He also does a few spins into fakey manuals, which becomes a go-to thing for him a little bit later. And throughout these parts, you're starting to see that style he becomes known for. So one thing that Giovanni Retta said about him was that he would go three pushes faster than anyone else would at the same spot. And as you watch the footage throughout this video, check, up, check out how far away from the landing he's actually landing. You know, for me, if I were to skate like a grass gap, you could go there and you could tell I had skated there because you'd see like lines of dirt because I would clip the end of, of the gap 
so I could go the bare minimum speed to clear it. He'll kickflip something, he'll land five feet past where the gap stops. And that's just pretty impressive. Um, and he had one more part with, uh, with World, and that's Trilogy from 1996. And this is what I'm talking about with that speed and power. He is blasting all of his tricks here. And just look at that kickflip back tail. It was perfect. And those hard flips, normally I, I like flat ones slightly more, but I just can't deny that these look great. I saw this pro skater talking about him and saying that he can pick any tricks he wants, even uncool ones like a varial kickflip, and he can still pull them off and get away with them because he always makes them look good. And I definitely get what he's talking about here. And I also want to point out his nolly backside heels. He does a few of these and they're always really crazy. It's like he's flipping them and they're spinning faster than him, so he's got to reach behind him and try to catch up to him completely blind. It's just... It's crazy. But a little while after this came out in 1996, he decided to switch over to chocolate. He was good friends with Keenan Milton, and this is what he said about that. Well, Keenan had just gotten on. I was still psyched on 101 till Dill and Nottis left. Then I just talked to Keenan, he talked to Rick and hooked it up. That's the way it went. He was in New York when he decided to quit, and so he had to call up uh, Rodney Mullen and quit to him over the phone, which is not the way he would have preferred to do it. But Mullen actually offered him more of a role in the company instead of just being a skater on the team, being a pro skater to actually be in the company. But Gino didn't want to deal with all that stuff. He just wanted to skate. And I can definitely respect that. So after he switched over to chocolate, him and Keenan had a shared part. Gino doesn't have a ton of tricks in it because he had just filmed the part for World that same year. But he does have some pretty cool stuff in here. And funny story, Gino's not even in his first ad with chocolate. They just put an outline of him in there. In 1997, he helped launch Action Shoes by being on their original pro team with him, Kareem Campbell, and Guy Mariano. Um, and he actually had a, a pro model um, for them. But it's kind of interesting because he says that back in the day, you wouldn't necessarily skate your own stuff. So he wouldn't really skate his own shoes. He wasn't skating his own pro deck a lot of the times. That's just kind of how it was back then. But his pro model was pretty cool at the time. He liked it, he said. But... Nowadays, looking back on it, it's really thick, it's really stiff, and it's kind of hard to ride. Um, but after that, after he was on action, he was doing more with, with chocolate. He ended up going on the chocolate tour in 1999, which he said was really brutal. You would skate all day, then you'd have to film skits all night. Stepping out. Oh my God. That was the fakest slam I've ever seen right there. And the lifestyle that he was starting to lead at this point was getting to be a little bit much for him. So he's talking about how they would go out to a rave all night, get home super late. He had this story about how he, Keenan, and uh, some other guys got home at 9 in the morning. Everyone else decided to crash. Keenan decided to make a, a turkey, like cook up a turkey in the morning and then invite a bunch of people over for a Thanksgiving dinner. I don't think it was on Thanksgiving from what I gathered, but you know, everyone else is crashed and they can't handle it. But like the, it was just nonstop, go, go, go all the time, you know, constant drinking and all that type of stuff. And that he just felt like he was not stuck, but like sort of in this routine of doing that all the time. And it wasn't doing great for him. So in some time uh, after, after Keenan passed, he decided to move back to, uh, to New York. And so when he was there, he was trying to get sober. He was just kind of skating for fun, started to do some filming um, here and there with a friend, and he ended up being in the video, yeah, right. So we'll talk about that uh, video, but first, there was this quote I found. It was at King Skate Mag, and it talks about this part, and I think that this was actually a very good point. If the tricks in this part, with its abundance of shitty spots and shaky filming, were done by just about anyone else, it would be entirely forgettable and potentially unwatchable at times. Corny as it may sound, this part is a true testament to the value of style, and an illustration of how it can shine through in even the most suboptimal circumstances. And I get that. If I were to explain the part in words and just tell you what tricks he did, it wouldn't sound all that interesting. And it's the reason why I considered it a skipper back in the day. For me, I'm thinking of like, Tony Hawk score totals and the tricks just weren't that crazy, you know, on that type of basis. But um, there's a lot going on in this part. So we're going to take a look at it. Uh, there are three different versions of this part, though, which is something I didn't know. There's the standard one, which is probably what we've all seen. Uh, there's a, a David Bowie version where they used a song of his instead. And that was if it was sold 
um, at, a, at a, a bigger store instead of like a local skate shop. Maybe it was like a licensing thing, I don't really know. And then in the special edition of the DVD, there is a third edit where it's some pop song I never heard of before. I don't know if it's some kind of inside joke or something, but there are three different versions of the part, but let's just look at it. They all have the same tricks at least. He starts off with his kickflip and he's just got so much speed. He actually says that he almost ripped his pants one time when he fell and he slid down and he almost came off. Sorry ladies, there's no actual footage of that. But he follows it up with a switch pop shove it and a 360 shove it over the grate, which I thought was pretty cool. You don't see that trick every day. It's pretty tough to control too. And then he's got this back lip. We've seen crazier tricks at this spot, very popular spot. You've seen basically everything done there. And he's got a back lip, but look at how much speed he does it with. And he slides a lot further than he has to. And he still lands with quite a bit of speed too. It's a nice one. And from there, we've got a 180 to fakie and nose manual. He's wearing a soccer jersey from an Italian team, which might be a throwback to his trip from uh, Italy. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's a front side nose slide. Again, simple trick, but with more speed than needed. He cleared a bunch of space on his landing here. And this 360 switch backside heel are really clean. So he's got a ton of nice 360s in this part. We're here, we got a switch flip over a fire hydrant. File that one away for a second, because we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. He filmed this line because he didn't have one for the part yet. The speed is pretty crazy, but just notice this 180. He said that more people were stoked on the style of that than the actual line. And just look at it. He pops it then, kind of scoops the tail around afterward. Pretty cool. Now we're getting